Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's run through project communications management. Um, I already started with some sections of this in class, uh, just due to the disruptions and so on. I'm rather going to quickly go from the beginning. So let's take a look at communications management. The learning objectives here is understanding the importance of good communications. This is something that we've said uh, quite a lot in class is a very significant portion of project managers. The role is actually managing communication. Um, we're going to review some basic concepts, explain the elements of uh, planning project communications. Again, as with all the other aspects of project management, uh, we are dealing with establishing a baseline, uh, basically a baseline plan and then implementing the actual project and measuring that against the, the baseline plan with any deviations obviously um, needing to be, be managed. Um, and then we're also going to talk briefly about project communications, how you can use different uh, sorry, uh, project communication technologies, how you can use different technologies to get into your project. Um, control, again, as with all the other projects, uh, knowledge areas, the control of project communications is also quite critical. You need to be sure that you can close the loop. You need to be able to be sure that you are actually communicating. Um, and then we're going to briefly look at some ways of dealing with uh, project communications, effective meetings, we've spoken um, about at length, and using other technologies and, and also using templates. I think I've mentioned quite a couple of times in class that there's a lot of value in actually standardizing some of your project templates and standardizing the communication. So 90% of project management time is basically spent in communicating. Um, and quite importantly, 35% of communication is actually non-verbal. So this is one of the big challenges we've got nowadays in, in, in terms of communicating via Skype or via WhatsApp or via some of the technology, uh, even the, the um, video conferencing software, is the fact that we are potentially missing out on a big percentage of communication because of the fact that it is non-verbal. So, what's the role of communication? We need to listen, question, we can use communication to educate, to get facts, to get clarity, to motivate people, to coach people, to resolve conflict, to negotiate. Um, I'll remind you here of my favorite quote by a guy by the name of William Urey from Harvard University, who is saying, don't get even, get what you want. So, if you negotiate, um, and if you communicate, always make certain that you get what the overall goal of the project is um, it is aiming for, rather than just trying to get even with someone that, that may have been nasty to you, etc. Greatest threat to many projects is a failure to communicate. And communication is really the oil that keeps a project running smoothly. Um, typically, the perception is that IT professionals cannot really communicate very well. We will on uh, on television and on the memes on Facebook and, and Twitter and so on, you'll often see IT professionals being portrayed as people that have got difficulty with communication. Now that may or may not be accurate. I think the, the reality is that all of us can communicate better. And specifically strong verbal and non-technical skills are often a key factor in career advancement for IT professionals. Um, it's not always the strongest technical uh, IT professional that may be the best manager. Okay, communication management processes, as with the other knowledge areas, there are various um, phases in and, and, and processes in communications management. Planning communications, determine what we want to communicate, in other words. Um, and this needs to be clarified in terms of the needs of the stakeholders. We need to manage the communication by creating, distributing, storing, retrieving, etc. Um, based on a com communication management plan, we need to control communication. Um, sometimes we make the assumption that communication took place. We make the assumption that because we sent a message that someone actually read the message, understood the message, and will act upon this message. And this is a, a, a big potential weakness in the way that we uh, communicate. That's why the controlling communications uh, process is so important in ensuring that we actually close the loop. So um, the 
process outputs, uh, we're basically looking at uh, project documents, updates, communications, management plan updates. You know, the moment you change anything on a project, that typically needs to be communicated. And especially if it's, it's important changes, for example, uh, the overall scope of a project, the moment that scope changes, this needs to be communicated very clearly. And um, we also need to make sure that everyone, all the relevant parties, actually understand that they need to adapt their, uh, their, their work practices, etc. Okay, so project managers spend as much as 90% of their time communicating. Um, I want to emphasize something here. This 90% spent communicating doesn't mean you need to talk 90% of the time. A very important portion of communication, part of communication is actually active listening. And really listening attentively to someone uh, and, and ensuring that you communicate also by means of receiving the correct information. Um, the other important thing is the, there's a need to focus on the differences as well in group and co individual communication needs. A uh, project manager must develop the ability to communicate not only to large groups, maybe sometimes groups, but also one-on-one -on -one communication. And it's basically a toolkit that you've got. You need to determine what will be the most effective method of communicating um, to get to what you want um, in terms of the overall project goals. Um, and also formal and informal means of communicating. Uh, quite often, it is highly effective to use informal methods of communication. Um, I've mentioned it a couple of times in class. I'm a very firm believer in a strategic cup of coffee. You know, having a, a more informal cup of coffee with someone, discussing a particular matter in a bit, a bit more of an informal setting, can uh, can really benefit the overall project. Um, Right, next point, distributing information in effective and timely manner. Timely here is, is very important. Uh, information received too late uh, is basically irrelevant. And uh, the moment you, you start sending someone information they don't need, you're sending it via channels that they don't use, for example. If everyone in a particular company is using an online tool, say something like Slack, um, the, the tool that I demonstrated in class, and you communicate suddenly via a little Twitter feed or some other channel that no one uses, that's obviously going to lead to communication failure and frustration. You also need to be able to understand how to communicate bad news. Um, the communication of, of, of things that are going wrong is often more important to the, the overall success of a project than communicating good news. So setting the stage for communicating bad news is a very important uh, challenge, but also a very important skill that you need to, to learn. Um, my rule of thumb there is never, ever, ever surprise people in big public meetings. And do not do this to any of your senior managers by communicating bad news where they lose face in a big sort of public meeting setting. Rather ensure that you do, um, like I've said before, meetings is not work. Uh, you actually do the work between meetings. So make sure that you set the stage for communicating bad news by in between meetings, ensuring you've got maybe a one-on-one -on -one discussion with your CEO or with the director, that your manager that you're reporting to, and explain the bad news so that they are not embarrassed um, in, a, in, a, in a big public meeting. Determining the number of communication channels. Um, I think yeah, a bit later we look at one or two, um, two aspects of determining communication channels. I think you, you just need to understand that communication is very, very complex sometimes and you need to manage this complexity. Um, Group and communication, individual communication needs differ. Uh, I think we've said earlier that people are not interchangeable parts. You know, in the section on um, human resource management, we very clearly said, I actually said I hated the, the term human resources because it's people management. People are not interchangeable parts. They are just not a resource. 
And if the moment you start thinking of people as being equal to the other resources in your organization, you've got a big problem. So uh, also assume that uh, the way you communicate with people need to, to really be adaptable and really needs to focus on their needs, not only on yours. Face-to-face -face communication. Um, we've said uh, between 55 58% of communication through body language, 35% in how the words are said. In other words, your intention with the communication and, and the um, almost the attitude that you are communicating with and only 7% through the actual content of words. So always listen attentively, listen actively um, because tone of voice, body language can say a lot about how someone actually feels. Um, also, you need to hear look for um, for basically a lack of congruence between what someone's words and someone's body language and actions are telling you. Um, and if you are attentive to all these aspects, then it becomes a whole lot easier for you to actually determine what communication and whether communication is actually taking place. Right, um, personal preferences. Some people have got different preferences in terms of communication. Introverts may like more private communication. Extroverts like to discuss things in public. Again, this is a very big, um, maybe oversimplification. Uh, big picture thinkers, detail thinkers. In class, I mentioned that most of the successful organizations will have a combination of these time and successful project teams as well. will have a combination of these skills on board. You know, people that can see the big picture and people that can almost mop up the details. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the basic principle here is you need to be analytical around who you're communicating with and how they may be uh, experiencing a message. And against that background, you must craft your communications and your own message. Right. Um, short frequent, meet, frequent meetings are very effective. A lot of the, uh, the agile project management uh, techniques like Scrum, for example, will have a daily stand-up meeting, which will be a, say, 15-minute stand-up meeting every single day, same format. Um, and it focuses people to really communicate what is important. A couple of guideline questions can help quite a lot here. Um, and I've also mentioned, the, well, gave the example of a friend of mine who's a CEO of a, a big shipping company, and they will always have their meetings as a stand-up meeting with a cup of coffee in hand and very severely time boxed. So they want to make sure that people don't see the meeting as work, that they actually just use the meeting as an opportunity for quick feedback. Um, there's lots of examples of miscommunication. I'm not going to go through this uh, in detail now. We've uh, already dealt with this example in class. Um, in terms of distributing information in an effective and timely ma manner, the, especially if you're communicating bad news, don't, don't bury crucial information in five pages of email. Um, don't be afraid to report bad information and actually go and, and, and be upfront with, and, and communicate the critical information first so that people can, at, the, at first glance, you know, at your report or your email message or the the um, presentation that you're doing, that they can immediately get the gist of what you are saying. Um, you know, get it out and deal with it. Other communication considerations, the receiver never really interprets a message exactly as you intended. Um, I've given some examples in class of, of how these type of uh, misunderstandings can occur, and you need to always be very careful of the way you are crafting your message uh, to make sure that people actually interpret it as you intended the message. Um, this becomes particularly problematic if you are, um, and, and very challenging I guess, if you are working across different geographic locations, if you're working in an international context, different cultural backgrounds, you know, people have got different approaches to working hours, language barriers, cultural norms, etc. And your communication needs to be very careful of this. Um, a quick example of this would be, um, you know, if you have got a, if you're working with a, a team that's um, 
or particularly uh, you know in particular countries this uh, different uh, religious or language barriers, different cultural norms, and you need to be able to adapt to that. Um, right, this is a great little example uh, on the slide that you can <laughs> work through of how to communicate uh, quite effectively. It's a bit tongue in the cheek, but at the same time, there's a couple of good lessons in this. Um, determining the number of communication channels. I said in class, this is, you know, this is not really something that um, I believe is highly important. This may be a, like an MCQ question or something. But the, the underlying principle from, for me here is what is important. That, that is that as the number of people involved increases, the complexity of your communication increases. There's more channels, more pathways, and more complexity. And you need to be very aware of this. Um, because... The more channels you've got, the more chances you've got that people can actually um, communicate in a incorrect or understand your communication in a correct way. Your message can get changed along the way. It can get a bit gobbled uh, in the process. Right. So next step. Uh, let's now look at the different processes: planning, communications, management. Uh, Project communication plan is a very important document that will guide how you will communicate. It's obviously going to vary, especially due to the size, you know, according to size of the project. Um, typically, your smaller project a communication plan can be something as simple as a couple of paragraphs in your team contract, whereas for larger projects, it will typically be a separate document. Communication management plan contents. All right, what's the and again, remember, or take a look at where it starts. It starts with stakeholder communication requirements. We don't define this from the perp from the perspective of the project manager, but we define this from the perspective of the stakeholder. What do the stakeholders require in terms of communication? What information do they require? The format I've mentioned in class. Um, you know, if someone expects a five page report and you give them a one paragraph report they're going to get slightly irritated if they expect a report in a spreadsheet format in microsoft excel and you send it to them in a text document they may be slightly irritated etc so let your stakeholders drive um, the requirements make sure that you understand what they require and also who will receive the information and who will produce it um, be aware of the fact that a lot of the stakeholder communication during a, pro, uh, a project, some of, sometimes, you know, this is confidential. And not everyone has got the right to see everything on a project. So you better make very sure that you are not suddenly sending, uh, for example, sensitive budgetary information out to external vendors that may not have the right to actually see these internal documents. Um, Suggested methods or technologies for conveying information. You need to decide in your uh, project plan and in your communications management plan rather um, What channels are you going to use for communicating? Are you going to use um, for arguments sake something like slack? Um, are you going to use jammer? Are you going to use the intranet? Um, so Microsoft SharePoint whatever the particular technologies are or will you still uh, predominantly use email? Will there be a weekly uh, video conference, maybe, or telecom? Um, and then, how frequently will you communicate? What will the escalation procedures be should something uh, need to be escalated to a higher level? How will you do that? And how will you change the communication plan? Um, and also, we've spoken previously about the, you know, just like you got with the word breakdown structure you've got a WBS dictionary um, in terms of the communication uh, management plan you also need to have a glossary of the common terminology if you for example say that you want to use IRC um, which is the old internet relay chat technologies um, you cannot make the assumption that everyone will know what the heck you are talking about so a glossary of common terminology will help right um, Stakeholder analysis, this is, uh, you know, in terms of communication, it always helps to see what stakeholders would want, what type of documents, in what format, who's the contact person, what's the due date, etc. 
so that you've got a, a plan. Again, um, project management deals with, with planning. Okay, the next uh, process step is managing communications. Um, we've said that it's a very large part of a project manager's job. You need to get the information to the right people at the right time in a format that's useful to them. Um, and you need to use the appropriate methods um, and media and also in terms of performance reporting. Quite often um, as a project manager I'm asked the question um, did we communicate this successfully to all the stakeholders and you need to be able to answer that question. Right, technology can add quite a bit in terms of creating and distributing information but the caveat there is of course when used properly. Um, and remember the moment you are using technologies in a corporate environment there's a different set of criteria that applies so yes it may be fantastic between you and your friends to use whatsapp as a primary communication channel but the moment you do this within a corporate environment it's got certain privacy implications it's got certain potential legal implications the fact that there's not necessarily a corporate um, audit trail of what you're doing may have an impact, etc. So you need to very carefully decide on the um, method and media that you, you follow. Um, you must also, a very important portion of communication planning often deals with uh, business continuity and project continuity. So uh, in your project uh, communication plan, it, I, I personally believe that it's very important to also take cognizance of the fact that you may need to have some disaster management type of uh, communication channels that you set up uh, beforehand. As you can see in this little case study, suddenly if you, your system is to deal with 4.75 million public phone calls on one day and you're not geared for that, it may have a particularly negative impact on your project. So. Uh, that's the goal of project uh, communication planning is think about this before you deal with disasters. Right, um, there are diff different ways of um, communicating, interactive communication, two or more people interact to exchange information, phone calls, video conferencing, etc. Push communication, that's where you send information out. This may be something like a mailing list. Uh, you know, where a report is automatically mailed to people once a week from a system, for example. Pool communication. This is, uh, if I want the information, I can go and get that. What I often do for projects is I set up a little project portal. If some of the people want to gather information, at, you know, whenever they need it, they can just log in and get the information that they require. Um, right, media choice table. Again, in your own time, you can go through this in a bit of detail. Uh, not all media are suitable for all communication purposes. If you want to, um, for example, maintain confidentiality, uh, there are certain you know, channels that are better than others. A uh, simple example of that is quite often if you want to maintain confidentiality and you send an email in a lot of big uh, corporate organizations, the CEO, the senior manager's uh, email may be dealt with by an assistant and uh, that assistant now suddenly has got sites of um, some very confidential information. So uh, again, this may not be an issue depending on the, the integrity of the assistant, but in some cases this may be an inappropriate channel. Right, um, there's a lot of things in communication that can can go right. You know, there's a lot of examples there of companies that are doing it very well, companies that are collaborating very well and using their communication systems as a driver of, um, of, of, of organizational innovation, but also as a driver of success in, in project management. Um, so some of the, the technologies here that are specifically very, very interesting, maybe things like um, nowadays we've gone past sort of web conferencing, teleconferencing, even video conferencing. Um, and uh, you can maybe go and Google the telepresence robots that you actually get in uh, in the context of, of corporate uh, video conferences. It's, it's quite interesting. Right, and then the third process is reporting 
uh, communication performance and the reporting also project performance uh, there's different ways of doing that it's basically three things you can report the status where are we now at a specific point in time what's the progress progress um you know we where are we and where do we need to be and if we are not there where we need to be why are we not there and then also forecasts you know will we be on schedule will we be um, within scope etc um, you know using some predictive uh, techniques to actually say and, and give people an idea of where the project is going at a particular space and time right let's now move on to the the last uh, section of communications the communication process and that is controlling communication um, the main goal of controlling communication is ensuring optimal flow of information throughout the entire project life cycle that's a, a very broad definition but like I, I've said in class a couple of times um, you know if you apply systems thinking to communication um, and you think in terms of communication uh, inputs the channel that you use as the transformation process and then the outputs is the message being received on the other side the feedback loop how people are you know how you basically confirm where the communication actually took place accurately that can can be quite a helpful uh, tool to understand um, the communication especially if there's lots of complexity it helps to break it down to those very basic aspects um, team communication again uh, the buck stops with you as the project manager you need to ensure that there's effective communication that takes place and that project communications is effectively controlled also in terms of of audit trails and in terms of um, documenting processes of communication right um, how do we actually improve project communication develop better communication skills that's both on a group and on an individual level running effective meetings um, you've picked up that this is one of my bugbears you know death by slow meeting um, use email and other tech effectively uh, there's a lot of almost abuse of emails within organizations where people just send a, a blanket email um, that's not very particularly well drafted and you just CC everyone and suddenly you assume that effective communication took place that is not necessarily the case and then templates um, I've mentioned previously something like project in a box project in a box dot org um, very nice professional set of templates that can help you quite a lot in project communication um, processes right uh, how do you develop better communication skills uh, quite often on, on team level your project team also needs to communicate better so sometimes a bit of training may be needed sometimes training on a particular technology platform that you use uh, something like slack for example um, may be quite useful and i think the, the last point there it really takes leadership to improve communication uh, a lot of communication uh, management and, and the effectiveness of communication has a lot to do with the ability of the project manager and the leader to actually um, reinforce their vision reinforce the message make sure there's consistency of message um, through the, the process right there's a lot of ways in which these wonderful new technologies that we use can actually cause um, issues in in, in, in projects um, yes we've got enormous amount of communication channels ranging from WhatsApp and Twitter and the newly launched uh, Facebook for work that I've mentioned uh, that's going to have an enormous impact on workplaces all over the world but a lot of people are not using these technologies very uh, very, very productively the whole cyber slacker I uh, concept um, and it becomes quite a management challenge to make sure that people are actually using the technologies for the benefit of the organization and in the best possible way effective meetings um, what I'll do is I'll also upload that uh, little TED video um, that I've showed you just uh, David Grady little video from David Grady I'll show that to you um, upload that to Ecomba as well and then 
the most important things with with meetings is determine if meetings are necessary at all. If a meeting, if you don't need to have a meeting, don't have a meeting. Meetings are an enormous waste of time unless there's a very clear purpose and intended outcome of the meeting. Um, Steve Jobs, the uh, former CEO of, of Apple and founder of Apple, he was very famous for walking into a big meeting and uh, if he didn't believe you needed to be there, he would literally chase you out of the room. It said, but um, sorry, Johnny, I don't need you in this meeting. Goodbye. And he would even do that in a fairly rude manner. But the uh, the, the main reason for that is the fact that if you don't uh, have to be in a meeting, it's enormous, uh, almost a theft of people's time. So make sure that you define the purpose and intended outcome of the meeting properly. Determine that only the people that need to be there would be would need to be there. You know, death by slow meeting is uh, it, it's enormously unproductive in, in many big organizations. Provide an agenda beforehand. Prepare handouts and visual aids. Make your logistical arrangements ahead of time. The most frustrating thing in the world ever is walking into a, a meeting and then some, some, suddenly someone is battling to get their PowerPoint slideshow um, onto the screen because they don't have the right adapters there and there's no power plugs, etc., etc. So don't be that person. Go and be properly prepared, run the meeting professionally. Also set ground rules for the meeting. So something as simple as saying that um, we will deal with questions after the presentations um, can, can help quite a bit. And then build relationships. Uh, quite often meetings may be used for almost internal political uh, point scoring. And uh, you need to make very sure as the project manager that you are, uh, you've got a clear purpose of the meetings that you build proper and professional relationships. Right, e email, instant messaging, texting, all these different tools. The, the key thing here for me is that you must use the appropriate medium for what you want to communicate. Make sure you send information to the right people. A lot of people have actually been dismissed for sending quite inappropriate information to the wrong WhatsApp group. Be very careful of that. Um, use meaningful subject lines. Um, make it clear if someone sees your email or your message that they know what it's about within two seconds. Limit the content of emails to one main subject. Don't write a thesis and then send it on to someone as an email. And be as clear as concise as possible. And remember, there's a, a wonderful quote, I um, cannot remember who the uh, famous uh, author that said, it takes uh, a couple of hours to prepare a good impromptu speech. Now that's very, very true. It sometimes takes a very long time to communicate something very simply and very elegantly. So rather spend time on crafting your communication properly than writing up, you know, throwing people with a lot of... Uh, a lot of information that you haven't applied your mind to, that you didn't really think through properly. And then, um, yeah, the last point. Uh, quite often you will nowadays get a request to work on a shared document, but the, the wrong people have got access to this document, you know. So suddenly people are collaborating on a document they don't really should have the right to edit it, etc. A um, bunch of collaborative tools exist. SharePoint, Microsoft SharePoint um, is an intranet system that's used in quite a lot of big companies. Google Docs you're probably familiar with. Wikis, um, websites designed to enable anyone to contribute or modify. You know, there's, there's hundreds of these different technologies. Um, like I've said in, in class, the most interesting one for me at the moment is probably something called Slack. It's been really effective in effectively applied within uh, some of the Silicon Valley organizations. Um, other example of that is uh, something called Yammer. And yeah, there's different ways in which organizations are approaching this. You could take a look at some of these best practice case studies. I've spoken through uh, the whole notion of templates. You can take a look at that. Um, and again, the, the idea with a template, uh, ladies and gents, is that we it's not necessarily going to be the perfect answer. Um, you know, so each project has got some unique elements. So I always try and use a template only as a starting point 
for communication. It saves me a lot of time. Um, and it enables me to start with a reasonable structure. Uh, uh, some other sample templates. I would uh, only thing I would change here is I like using color in in uh, progress reports, where specifically you can very clearly see uh, with a say a traffic light type of communication, you know, sentences that I believe are problematic. I will put in red issues that are um, under control, I'll put in green, etc. Um, but that's just a personal preference. And also, the moment you, you've gone through a project communication, it's very important to look at the process critically and also look at a, a lessons learned report. You know, let's reflect on what worked, what didn't work, what could we do better. Um, this deals very, uh, very, or, or it deals with the whole issue of the learning organization guy by the name of Peter Senge, Senge, I'm not sure how you pronounce his surname. Um, so I think organizations that continue to learn from their mistakes and that continuously look analytically at what they are doing are just simply being proven to be much more successful in the long run. Project archives, that's a very important thing. That um, Quite often if you're doing big projects in something like financial services or maybe in the pharmaceutical industry or um, in some other sensitive industry, you need to make sure that you've properly archived the project records, that you've pro uh, properly archived your communications to make sure that you can learn from this um, in future as well. Project websites, nowadays it's very easy to set up a little project website um, to actually store important documents and other information. Um, right, you can do some of this, you know, pro MS Project um, has got some abilities where you can actually put the project plan online, etc. So with project communications, again, there's a lot of different software out there. My simple rule here is it's never only about the software. The software is not going to solve any problem for you. You know, it, it can aid you, it can help you, but software in and of itself will not uh, ensure that you're communicating properly. So I, I always say, you know, be wary of salespeople with suits and attache cases. So just uh, be aware of the fact that the tool itself will not, it's never m more than a tool, it's something that uh, you need to apply still in the correct way. All right, quick chapter summary. The goal of project communication management is to ensure timely, appropriate generation, collection, dissemination, storage, and disposition of project information. So the main processes, like we've said, includes planning the communication management, actually managing the communications processes, and then controlling communication and ensuring that uh, at the end of the day, your communication strategy, your communication plan, processes, and the way you control this must benefit the overall um, goals of the project and must add value to your project as a whole. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. That uh, concludes our little screencast. Um,